Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of They Live Assault on Cable 54 using basically the solo mode of the game or the one to three player rules that is. I honestly don't know if I did goofs or not because the game is really relatively fresh and hasn't even arrived everywhere in the world as far as I know at least and I really didn't get a lot of comments in respect to any potential rules groups here. So I think I am okay, so I will keep going. The one piece that's still a little bit unclear to me is about this very specific breaking news card here. For now, I will leave it in that area. And when someone is moving in, then it's kicking in. That's at least how I understand it. And the other question I had even, I think this came from our very first episode, was in respect to those Hoffman lenses token, if I am allowed to trade those between characters or not. The rules don't list them and they're very specific in respect to one resistance card and up to two of those scrap tokens here and they don't mention those Hoffman lenses so I guess I'm not allowed to trade those but happy to stand corrected that is. Um, with that being said I think I could pick a new resistance leader but I'm okay with Frank down here who currently is or still is our resistance leader. The only debatable thing is in respect to his wanted tokens he has three of those and that could be the one piece where I think maybe let's hand it over maybe to Dr. Reddy or so. Mm, because again, I still think that similar to Eldritch Horror again, this comparison, um, some things do affect the, let's say, leader in that game too. Not always negatively, but very often so. So maybe should I change it then? Because again, there's nothing really where she's waiting for something for him, for example. I think right now they're all pretty much on their own. And yeah, the only thing that Frank was going to do potentially was to move to the Grand Hotel and take out that Thug Invader there. So when you take out those um, invaders or enemies, you get to do another test and then if that test is successful, I think for every success or so, you gain one resistance item. So this can be nice. The thing is, again, according to my ruling here, this breaking news card would kick in, which says each player in the tax exempt air tests um, combat. Each player that fails is moved to the police station space and may not perform any actions this turn. And again, this this the one piece that really was throwing me off was this, this turn because again, the breaking news card happens at the end of the round basically so there aren't any actions quote unquote this turn so I think it has to spill over to the next round basically this one here so I guess if he's moving there he needs to roll that test and there is no real attack action in this game so I really have to move him there and then as part of the response phase those thugs will then or this thug will then attack me and then yeah I have to yeah, I'll live with the consequences, whatever they are. So the only thing that would, yeah, I would basically miss out on two actions, but those two actions may not be the end of the world. So maybe I should try that. We will leave him to be the resistance leader just to see what happens. And again, with his basically free move, he's moving into the Grand Hotel. And again, the way I understand this breaking news card is we have to roll our combat dice now, which is three and we are looking for, oops, one success so let's see about that and here's a kick ass we are good so again this card doesn't kick in and then we still have two more actions again this was only a free move so i guess with his first action he's laying low and getting rid of one of those wanted tokens and then yeah should we scrap this fire axe for now it's only a one and we need scrap tokens. I'm relatively certain that we need scrap tokens in order to get more useful stuff or at least one Hoffman lenses too. I think I will do that. So I will scrap this fire axe here. It's basically, I think it's out of the game or discarded, can't quite remember, but therefore I gain one more scrap token. And we need three um, for the normal characters to build one Hoffman lenses. But those were both of his actions now. Let's move over to Myra Ready. And here is also another tasty scrap token. So I hmm, am also inclined to move there. The thing is, what would I do there? That's really the problem. Again, I get a free move. I could move here and then I could do other stuff, but then I'm here. I have two actions, which I won't be using then. And this really seems rather wasteful. On the other hand, there's also 
nothing else to do here. Yeah, that's that's something I don't like in a game when you have actions and there is really literally nothing that you can do. And I couldn't have planned for this. Again, there isn't a lot to do actually. If again I would be able to pick up those scrap tokens as part of my move and then whatever do stuff with them, then this would be a different story. But basically just moving there, doing nothing just to get one scrap token, I don't know, seems rather wasteful. But I guess I need those scrap tokens. I mean, I will still have an encounter here, most likely, because again, I think Nadar is going to fight those invader paramedics during his encounter or location phase. No, I think that's earlier than that. So I guess let's do that, right? So she's moving here. She can't even lay low. That's really kind of a bummer. Where does she need to go? Maybe that's... Ah, she needs to go to the mall. Maybe that's a thing. So she could move here and with her free move she will move over here and then she could make it to the mall basically for her next K file card at least in the next round. Let's do that. Okay, let's do that. It has taken me a while but I'm okay with that. And then it's the Zodiac Club who are up here and they want to make it to the thrift store. So they will make it here. And there is also one tasty token there. Um, they still have two actions. I think with one action, they will also lay low, getting rid of one of those. And that's that, right? Again, there's nothing else that they can do. We can do our collective consciousness, but trading mobility points right now other than those two doesn't really make sense i would totally reduce this by one and increase this by one but yeah that's not how it's working so i guess no no that's that and last but not least it's nader and i think i had a plan with him so he is going to take his free move up here He's doing the freeway move for his first action, therefore he has to take one wanted token. You can move further than that, in fact. And then with his second action, he will take his normal action or move action to move into the campsite. So he will be able to fight those fellas and he might be able to pick up um, a scrap token as well. I like that. Okay, that's not bad at all. Now we are coming to the response phase. And that's the first real response phase. And I think I will start with Frank up here at the Grand Hotel. If that would be a human enemy, um, there would be an influence symbol on this uh, token. And then I could try to influence them and then they could join the resistance. In this case, it's an invader. Obviously, they're not going to join the resistance. So we simply have to fight them. And the first thing that we have to do is to roll a stealth check. It's not really the end of the world. If we are failing the stealth check, we are then also losing um, basically one die for the combat check. And what does it says when this enemy is defeated, roll a dice on a white kick as take an injury card. Okay, and he takes up to three wounds. So we may not even able to take him out. Now that's not great, but nothing I can do about this. So we will start with the um, stealth check. We have a stealth of two. The problem is we are losing one die for each wanted token we have, um, but we are still rolling one die at least. And um, we only need to reach the one here. So one success would be enough to... Yes, awesome, amazing job, Frank. So we are not losing any dice for our, let's say, upcoming combat test. And yes, there is also a nice flowchart for the normal PvE encounters, which is basically here. So we have done that. Or you have started responding in the same space as you. That, that's what we have done. And they're not moving away if there is an enemy in their space. Maybe I should have mentioned that. So we did roll the stealth check. Um, is your stealth rule higher or equal to the enemy's stealth value? Yes, it was. We are now rolling for combat. Again, otherwise we would have suffered minus one combat dice. Um, and now again, yeah, we are simply rolling for combat. The idea or the plan is, did you roll equal or more successes than the enemy's health value, which in this case is a three. We already figured that. So let's see how many dice we are rolling. We are definitely using our pickaxe here. So we get three dice from our normal combat encounter. And then we are adding two more dice from our pickaxe here. And again, the idea is to come up with three successes, right? And what does it says during a combat with another player? Okay, no, that's only for another player. Okay, let's roll some dice. And so far, I didn't have to use the extra set of dice. So the game comes with six of those big ones here, and I ordered a second pack. 
prepare a second set for those. So let's see. And one, two. Oh, only two. Are you kidding me? And again, there is no reroll ability, right? Oh, that's so annoying. Mm. Okay. Good thing is they will hold on to the um, wounds here. That's at least a small comfort. And then we are checking how many wounds we are taking. So we are comparing our test result with their combat value, which is a two. So in this case, we are not suffering any wounds. If this would have been a three, we would have taken one wound. So we are always gaining the difference. So that's okay. So we are not suffering any wounds. The problem is though um, we don't have an encounter here simply because there is an enemy. Makes sense and that's basically the end. So he should be able to take out those enemies with his next um, response phase. But yeah that was a little bit embarrassing. But then it's... Oh I think we forgot got no that's still fine as i nearly forgot the invader officer here and again they will remain within the area and they will move towards the closest hero or character with the highest wanted level in this case they don't have a wanted level which means this um, there is no one else here so they will simply not move so that's at least something but then we have nada down here at the resettlement area at the campsite so let's see what those paramedic invaders are okay they have a sneak value of three so we are most likely going to suffer um, a, ma a penalty on our combat roll. we are not going to roll three successes here good thing is they only have this they have a raid support um oh, that's interesting raid support hmm. because i think i'm not supposed to look at that or am i now that's a bit strange but so far i think it didn't kick in anyway and here it says enemies in the same area recover. Ah, that's the raid support thing. So if this happens, then enemies in the same area recover all health. And they have two health points. Okay, so in theory, we should roll our stealth. We have a two. Um, problem is we also have a one to token. So we are only rolling one die. So we are not going to make it here for this stealth check anyway. So there is no point rolling any dice. Let's see how many combat points we have or combat dice we have. And I think now I will be actually able to use my extra dice because we are getting six dice here. That's our base attack value. And we get one more die from our rusted shotgun here. Because we're using it, we are gaining an extra wanted level. But that's okay. I take it. And then it has a special ability up close and personal or any two white count as a critical hit. Okay, I take that. Let's hope we don't need a critical hit with seven dice in the end. This is really massive. And one, two, that's enough to take out those suckers here. Amazing job, Nader. And next we are going for an intelligence check to see if we can loot those guys. So yeah, let's see about that. And now I'm really happy that I didn't get rid of the scientists. So we have a two plus one, that's three dice. And for every success, no matter which color, we are drawing a resistance card. Nice. So let's see. Uh, let's take the, let's hold on to the two dice we have here. That's a good advice from both Paul and Doug. So we need three dice in this case. So always keep the good dice. And uh, of course they had to fail. So this was a complete rip, but those guys are out. That's at least something I take it. And this also means we will have an encounter and will most likely be able to gain um, the scrap token. But I think we still have to be successful at whatever test it is we are having there, at least as far as I remember, but I need to check that. Okay, I think this was in fact the response phase. Let's move to the location phase, which will not happen for Frank. So let's do Dr. Myra ready here at the projects next and the projects are up here. You've heard stories about an ex-resistance member that is hiding in the projects. The recent raids have terrified them and they no longer want to fight for the cause. You visit them and attempt to change their mind. Okay, we are checking influence. Ah, that's her weak spot. Hmm, that's only one. Huh, I could now in fact use her blinded by science before rolling an influence that you may spend a Hoffman lenses token to increase. I think we are going to do that because right now I don't need them. So let's do that. So um, we are basically increasing our influence to a four, which is much better. So let's roll some actual dice here. And are you kidding me? 
wasting this Hoffman Lenses token for nothing. But okay, can't change it. They won't listen to a word you have to say. They push you away and slam the door. Okay, no ill effects whatsoever, other than we have basically wasted a very, very precious Hoffman lens. Okay, it is what it is. Over to the, I keep forgetting, Zodiac Club. Over here at the thrift stores and they will go for their case files, obviously. So let's see what we get. Zach tells you all that his bike was taken by police during a raid, but he found it for sale again in one of the thrift stores. When he checked over the bike, he noticed a tracking device stuck just inside the frame. Start watching closely. Over time, you work out that the police are taking items during raids, placing trackers on them, then selling them to the thrift stores. You believe their hope is the resistance will buy them again, and it will allow the police to find a new hiding locations. You need to stop them getting out. Um, we are checking combat, and that's also a very masterful plan, almost like the Kenobi series. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think we are rolling only one die, actually. Wow! That's a tough one. Why should we do combat for this kind of thing? Wouldn't this rather be an intelligence or maybe a stealth thing? I don't know. Okay, let's do that. So let's roll that one measly die. And no, it's chew bubble gum. You barely even break a lamp before the owners kick you out. Okay, we get one wanted. Again, not the end of the world, but also not a success. We basically have to get rid of this card now. And draw a new one and this time we have to make it to the hilltop housing which again of course is basically at the other end of the city of LA are you kidding me and I think we are not getting the scrap token either and no I think we are only getting if you are successful with a specific or generic location card as well as being rewarded with whatever the card says you will also be able to collect any scrap tokens or resistance card so i think if i follow my personal story i don't have enough time to pick up the scrap tokens because it's also not outlined here on the basically other column where it's talking about the personal story card no i think not then last but not least it's nada and I think the same rules apply here. Even if you would be successful now, you wouldn't be able to um, pick up that scrap token. But yeah, let's be <laughs> successful first. So here is his next case file. What little belongings you had were stored at the campsite. It was the place you were staying until a violent raid forced you out of the area. You know it's a long shot, but you head back there to see if anything survived. The area is full of families attempting to rebuild. You go to where your tent was and start sifting through the rubble. You barely get started before you see the police return and start combing the site, as if destroying the area wasn't enough. No, they won't leave these poor folks alone. You take action. Okay, that's another combat encounter for him. Six dice. And I do believe I'm not allowed to use my guns for these kind of events i could be wrong though let's roll the six dice and see how things go and yeah one measly success on those dice but that's all we needed for this card because that's a clear pass you grab a couple of bricks from the dust and charge at the officers it's enough to scare them into leaving we're getting another combat you return to searching in and find one item I take that. This will bring us to seven combat and we are drawing an item card now. So let's see if we find one. Oh, that's a computer technician. That's a weapon. Let's continue going. And that's the old Halloween mask, which we equipped to the offhand. Useful for concealing your identity or scaring children. Okay, we get plus one stealth when wearing this Halloween mask. Yeah, not sure if that works this way, but I totally take that nice. And wow, this comes with three stealth. So this is really one of the things we need to um, investigate rather sooner than later to see if that is any helpful to us. Because getting three Let's say, I think these are three successes for the encounter. I think this could be massive, actually. Awesome. But those were also three case files, right? So I think this is the normal case file. Yeah, exactly. Um, the starting one um, doesn't count in this case. So we have finished three case files, which is the end of his personal story. And up next, um, whoever is finishing their personal story gets to read the upper or the lower part. 
And this is now a problem in the solo mode. In the multiplayer mode, it's basically um, yeah, doesn't really matter. So the human player or the actual player would read either the human side or the invader side. They would still gain the same item here, collect Nader's hand cannon weapon. The thing is, this weapon now comes also in two flavors, the good side and the bad side. And as I don't know right now, it, I, I'm also not able to, to check those out. So the way how I will play, and there's nothing specified in the rules, unfortunately. The way I will play that now is, if Nada, if I make it to the assault phase, that is, let's, let's start there. If Nada will be a human, then I will use his human weapon for that, the human side for that. And the other way around, I will go for that one for the for the invader side. Or I think then it will work against us anyway. Or Nader might be out until then. So I think it's not the end of the world, but I think they should have specified that in the rules accordingly. So okay, let's take out though or those items, Nader's hand cannon. So here it is, or here they are again. I don't know which one is which. I will continue to use it now. Um, I came here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Awesome, there it is. So um, we equip it to the weapon hand, of course. It gives us plus two instead of the plus one. And um, the special effect, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Uh, minus two chew bubble gum rolls in a roll. No, wow, that's amazing. Up to two, I think they mean up to two chew bubble gum rolls in a row. Okay, I don't get it. Minus two chew bubble gum rolls in a row. During combat counts as kick ass. What do they mean with in a row? I don't get it. I really don't get it, sorry. So again, I can transform two Jew bubblegum into a white kick ass. Is that what they're trying to tell me here? I don't know, I mean, it's still the better weapon compared to my rusted shotgun, I think it is. I really don't know. But again, it could still be worth um, basically up to three of those. Again, this is now, let's say I will, maybe I decide to put this into the resistance resources. And I don't know which one is which, obviously. But then if Nader then will be a human player at the final assault, then I will, whatever, do the right one. Because again, if he would be a human player, then the human player wouldn't be drawn. And this is what you do as a human player. You get both cards, you look at them with the Hoffman lenses, you don't have to spend any um, tokens for that. And then you choose the quote-unquote right one for you right so i think in this case yeah let's 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 do it like this but okay i think this was the location phase for all the characters on the board i'm really happy but now all the more i'm wondering if i shouldn't be allowed to take this scrap token here maybe they really simply missed that in the rules yeah i don't know but again for the most part the rules are very clear and specific which is why i tend to believe they deliberately left it out but on the other hand, it also feels weird. I don't know, but okay. I will not gain this scrap token now. If you watch this video and I'm still not in episode four or so, then you just let me know and I will try to repair that. Okay, over to the breaking news or the propaganda phase that is. But I guess this also means this card is no longer, oh no, this was this card here actually, the blue one. Yeah, let me bring that one down. Let's see, that's another green one. So again, we are losing one hour, which for now is still okay, but I really don't feel like making any progress, actually. Then we are doing a raid on the Mary thing here. Again, I have completely forgotten which one is which. I think, yeah, there was one, actually. Oh, and that's bad. I think that's really bad because I am relatively certain that Johnson here, or the version of Johnson, um, was having the Marian Reproduce. So let's check that, so let's do that. And indeed, marry and reproduce, that's terrible. So we are losing this one here, so that's really a bummer. Um, and then, yeah, I think everyone in the same area now takes two wanted tokens. Now that is bad. So we have lost the only card we have stashed there and both Dr. Myra Reddy and Nada are getting two wanted token eats. Nada is already at four. I think there is no maximum that you can have as far as I remember, but you will always have a target on your back. But yeah, losing this one is bad. And I think we have a new bikini billboard out over here in the downtown area. So I think we still get to look at it, even though no, there is no real effect here. We still get to look there. So let's see what this one says. And that's also a consume. No, that's a consume one. So you see that here. 
Um, but again, there is nothing that would trigger here anyway. Um, I think that was that. That was the raid. Up next, we are spawning to scrap at 15 and 21. 21 being here, and that's really uh, the one piece. This whole scrap mechanic doesn't really work, actually. Honestly, because mm, it's so hard to pick those up again if I don't even get those when doing my case files. I mean, yeah, I would have get, gotten one, but why should I move here just for one scrap token? Maybe we need to wait until another one comes up there. So this feels a little bit weird, but okay, let's see about that. We still have our high speed pursuit down here on our breaking news card. A high speed pursuit is underway following a robbery in the financial district. Armed Robert fled the national bank with several bags of cash and immediately jumped into yet unidentified getaway car. Police are attempting to stop the vehicle safely but have advised drivers to stay off the freeway until the situation is under control. This comes only days after another armed man walked into the bank and shot several people dead. Is it time to start keeping our money under the mattress? Players who perform the special movement action using the freeway or, or who use it whilst this is in play will suffer an additional plus one. What, what does it mean? I mean, what... what piece of crap is that i mean the first one is clear who performs a special movement using the freeway that's clear gain an additional one i get it but what does the second part mean or who use it whilst this is in play or who use it use what yeah that's that's really not well written in some of those cards i'm pretty sure there is some room for improvement so maybe i'm simply not getting it again not not my natural language here okay up next um as an ex-con has opened a sanctuary for abandoned pets after prison turned their life around oh isn't that nice Okay, I have to remember this one, at least I think, I hope. And then we have to decide if we want to change the resistance leader. But again, there is no reason to do that. So moving to the next round, we will start with Frank over here at the Grand Hotel. The problem now is, do I really want to linger here just for nothing? I think I don't. I may want to consider moving back to the cheap hotel because this is my next target for my case file. But how do I get there? I could... No, the freeway doesn't help me here. Mm. So I could go for a free movement. Then here and there. I could consider moving down here to the downtown billboard. Then I could draw, but then I would roll my influence and his influence sucks for basically you are can spend basically two scrap to roll your your influence test and for each success you gain then one resistance card at that location but again with one influence there's really no point and i could camp there and he's rolling his intelligence check so this could still be his best deal as strange as it sounds but i also want to get rid of those so maybe you do want to stay here let's do that yeah why not so i will simply lay low oh that's wrong <laughs> losing one want token here at least yeah why not then it's dr myra ready and i believe her idea was to move to the mall because this is her next case file card so she's moving one out one movement here and then she will also lay low to get rid of one of her wanted tokens i Think that's okay what do we do with the zodiac club now they are still here up at the thrift stores um, in theory they need to go to the hilltop housing so they need to swap places with Frank basically I think they are safe from the invader officer because they would only move one space in here question is should we simply move out this is now again something we now have this token here and we are basically leaving out and the other I can stay here, lay low once and but then what's the point? I mean, uh, that's it's really this this whole mechanic with those crap tokens. I don't know if I like that unless again, I'm playing these incredibly incorrect. I don't know. So I think I want to keep moving. Yeah, let's do that. So they're moving one space for the free move. And then one space for their first action. They will also lay low, getting rid of their one and only wanted token. And yeah, they will not even make it to the hilltop housing with their next turn. But okay, it is what it is. Then it's Nada. And Nada now has all the time in the world, actually. So I think he is for his free movement. I don't know. 
could stay here as well. Right here is, I think it doesn't matter too much. He can stay here and here he will lay low. So he's getting rid of one wound and one wanted token. At least he is fully healed now. And for his second action, he's basically exchanging his rusted shotgun with Nader's hand cannon. And he's also equipping the mask. So he's doing okay. Again, I still haven't fully understood what Nader's hand cannon does. Yeah, I don't know. But okay, I think those were all of the actions. We will start, or we only have one real encounter during the response phase. Again, the invader officer here in the downtown redevelopment area isn't moving. And yeah, they are going to attack Frank, but we he only needs one more success now. Again, we are rolling here yeah, only one die, right? For his sneak stealth check. And awesome, again, he makes it. That's amazing. And then he's rolling three plus, so he's rolling five dice for his uh, combat test, basically. And yeah, that's a row of successes. Amazing stuff. The thing now is, um, it says when this enemy is defeated, roll a die on a white kick as take an injury card. Now that's not so nice, but let's see. But that's a true bubble gum. In this case, I totally take it. So this one is no more. We are getting to roll our intelligence test, which is three. And no successes again. Uh, this was the whole plan to get at least one card out of this, maybe even two. Oh, that's so lame, but at least he's having an encounter here, but not sure what this is worth it. Ah, that's tough. But okay then, he's also starting his, what's the tax exempt area? That's the pink one. Um, his location phase at the, where is it? The Grand Hotel. So let's see what we get. The pool outside the hotel is surrounded by all sorts of useful items as invader guests leave their belongings for a quick dip. These could help you on your journey. Check intelligence, which is three for him. But he did fail on this before, right? So let's roll three dice. And yeah, at least one success. Here we only needed one. You pull the fire alarm, causing the area to clear. You sneak around and clap plus, grab plus one item, plus one scrap token. Now that is useful because that's his third one. And again, we are getting an item. So maybe it wasn't a whole whiff at all, so that's a weapon, that's an ally, uh, what's this, another weapon, an item. So that's a wrench, but I'm not sure what those guys were doing with wrenches at the pool. But okay, I take it. The workman's handy wrench, useful for undoing nuts, tightening bolts, or if all else fails, just whacking something until it works. Equipped to offhand, plus two, plus one. I take it, awesome. No, that's not bad at all, and also comes with three. So I think we, yeah, but again, wasting one Hoffman lens is just for one of those might be a little bit wasteful, but that wasn't a bad encounter at all. And then up next, it's Dr. Myra Reddy. She's going for her next case file card here. Your investigations have led you to a clothes store where ex-colleague Marie Bennett is attempting to live a normal life. She doesn't have the riches of somebody who has sold themselves out to the enemy, but isn't hiding either. You would expect anyone who was part of the Hoffman group would be using fake identities. You watch carefully, trying to weigh up the situation. You see a trio of people entering the, enter the store. We are extracting her now, one of them says, into their watch. They're invaders. You need to save Marie. So we are checking her combat, which is two. And again, I'm relatively certain I'm not allowed to use my weapon in these kind of scenarios, only when I really do a, a real combat encounter at least i think but that's also relatively similar to calibrage horror in the end Let's see. yes this was a success amazing you run into the store barge past the invaders and grab marie she explains she's sick of hiding and wants to do whatever she can to help you oh nice so we have full completed our second case file and we are increasing our combat to I take it, which is the next one? And that's the construction site. Ah, oh, yeah, all the way up there. How do I get there? Oh, well, that's not too far. One, two, three, four steps. Okay, that's not too bad. Nice. Up uh, next is the Zodiac Club at the Financial District. So let's see what they are encountering there. One minute you're walking past a bank. The next you awake to find yourself locked in an almost empty office. They mistook you for someone who robbed the place earlier 
and are waiting for the police to arrive. So we are checking, I think that's the engineering piece and that's three dice for them. So let's see. Yeah, that's a success. Nice. Using only a paper clip from the desk, you pick the lock and escape. Plus one engineering. I take that for sure. As this is bringing us to four. Yeah, that's not too shabby at all. And then last but not least, we have Nada here at the campsite. Campsite is here in the middle. A police patrol forces you to take refuge with a group in the, in the camp. One of them is armed with a rifle, but they tell you jams every time they fire. They offer you a reward if you fix it. We are checking our engineering, which is two dice for him only. But actually, I thought he was rather of a handyman, right? Didn't he work at a... Um, oil rig or so, I don't know. And yeah, he completely failed, which again means he's not allowed to pick up that token there. Okay, your attempt to fix it makes the rifle worse. Yeah, great job. Oh, he could have gotten two scrap out of this. And this would be the third cra uh, scrap. Are you kidding me? Oh, that really hurt. Okay, over to the breaking news or the propaganda phase that is. So this piece is no longer in action and we have another blue one which will spawn more enemies in this case and we are replacing the Johnson one with a different um, item so it was the Marian refugees one so let's bring out a different one and that's this one I don't know which one is which and then we are adding one enemy to space six that's a uh, invader sniper it comes with a raid support here so whenever it's triggering we have to uh, flip it over I think the other one did it say raid support or did I say no it, it did say so actually it was on there but I didn't read it so if something happens in respect to raid in that area we are flipping this over and then we know what it does. Next enemy goes to space nine. Over here at the construction site, that's also um, something. I think this is something we are supposed to flip over right now, the invader cleanup team. So let's see what it does. Discard all scrap in the area when this enemy is spawned. Yeah, okay, that's a nasty one as we are basically losing both of those but there are I think they're beatable that's at least something they're not really fighters they're here to clean up and last but not least we are adding another enemy to um, those guys and these are protesters these are human protesters so we can try to influence them and they also come with a reveal ability so let's look at those is it this or that why do we have to influence ratings on that actually ah i think i got it mm, that's now an interesting one is one basically if we are successful then we're adding it to the resistance resources so one of those values is then counting for us of course and i guess it's this one here that will give us the extra points. I think this is the one we need to beat. Yeah, I think so. So we need three successes to um, influence them. So who can do that actually? <laughs> no one. <laughs> yeah, that will be a tough one unless we are getting something tricky. And maybe the doctor might be able to do that because she can spend three extra things. Okay, cool. So that's the first human enemy um, we encountered here on um, the map of Los Angeles and then last but not least we are dealing with the event know thy neighbor bars clubs and cafes across the cities are joining together today to encourage LA's residents to get to know one another the idea was birthed from local bar owner Karen McGilligan who said that our lives are getting busier all the time and we have forgotten how important socializing can be I want to bring this city together and let them engage with the people that pass the street every day if you've got an hour or two we two free, why not pop into town and say hello to a few of the locals? As an action, each player can test influence on a pass, gain a random ally. Now that's a great one. I really must not forget this. Cool, so there are also helpful events here. I like that. And up next, are you really too cool for school? A teacher explains why learning is the new smoking. Yeah, awesome. I really love those. These are really great. Okay, I think I was originally considering to do three rounds, but I think because of all my um, thinking and all the stuff, all the enclaries, especially around Nader's hand cannon, and I really will ask on the geek now after this video, I think I will stop here. 
and hope that's fine with you and hopefully with the next episode i should be able to further increase my pace let's see about that i think we are still okay i think the next one is not a red one either so we are still good on time and i'm playing relatively slow as i'm learning the game obviously okay again huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there really do appreciate all your support and again if you want to support my little channel you can join me on patreon you can join me here on youtube you can leave a little thanks by clicking that little icon underneath this video like and subscribe leave a comment everything helps and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye